Betty, child, dear child, will you wake up? Will you open up your eyes? Betty, little one. Uncle, Susanna Walcott's here from Dr. Griggs. Oh, let her come, let her come. Come in, Susanna. What does the doctor say, child? He bid me come and tell you, Reverend Sir, that he can discover no medicine for it in his books. Then he must search on. I, sir, he has been searching his books since he left you, sir. But he bid me tell you that you might look to unnatural things for the cause of it. No, no, there be no unnatural cause here. Tell him I have sent for Reverend Hale of Beverly, and Mr. Hale will surely confirm that. Aye, sir. Go directly home and say nothing of unnatural causes. Aye, sir. I pray for her. Uncle, the rumor of witchcraft is all about. I think you'd best go down there and deny it yourself. The parlor's packed with people, sir. I'll sit with her. And what shall I say to them? That my daughter and my niece I discovered dancing like heathen in the forest? We did dance, uncle, let you tell them I confessed it. And I'll be whipped if I must be. But they're speaking of witchcraft. Betty's not witched. Abigail, I cannot go before them when I know you have not opened with me. What have you done with her in the forest? We did dance, uncle. And when you leaped out of the bush so suddenly, Betty got frightened and then she fainted. And there's the whole of it. Child, sit you down. I would never hurt Betty. Now look you, child. Your punishment will come in its time. But if you traffic with spirits in the forest, I must know it now. For surely my enemies will, and they will ruin me with it. But we never conjured spirits. Then why could she not move herself since midnight? This child is desperate. It must come out. My enemies will bring it out. I have many enemies. Do you understand that, Abigail? I have heard of it, uncle. There is a faction that is sworn to drive me from my pulpit. Do you understand that? I think so, sir. Now then, in the midst of such disruption, my own household is discovered to be the center of some obscene practice. Abominations are done in the forest. For sport, uncle! You call this sport? I saw Tituba waving her arms over the fire when I came upon you. Why was she doing that? She just... And I heard a screeching and a gibberish coming from her mouth. She always sings her Barbados songs and we dance. Abigail, I cannot blink what I saw, for my enemies will not. I saw a dress lying in the grass. A dress? Aye, a dress. And I thought I saw someone naked running through the trees. No one was naked, you mistake yourself, uncle. I saw it. Now, tell me true, and let the weight of truth lie heavy upon your shoulders. For now my ministry, my ministry, and perhaps your cousin's life are at stake. Whatever abominations you have done, give it all to me now, for I dare not be taken unaware when I go before them down there. There is nothing more. I swear it, uncle. For three long years, I have fought to bend these stiff-necked people to me. And now, just now, when some good reputation is rising for me in the village, you tarnish my very character. I have given you a home, child. I have put clothes on your back. Now. Tell me true, your name in the village it is entirely white, is it not? Why, I am sure it is, sir. There be no blush about my name. Abigail, is there any reason other than you have told me for your being dismissed from Goody Proctor's service? She hates me, uncle, she must, for I would not be her slave. It is a bitter woman, a lying, cold, sniveling woman, and I will not work for such a woman. She may be. And yet it has troubled me that you are now seven months out of their house, and no other family has ever called for your service. My name is good in the village. I will not have it said my name is soiled. Goody Proctor is a gossiping liar. Why, come in. It is a marvel. It is surely a stroke of hell upon you. No, it is not. How high did she fly? How high? No, no. She never flew. Why, it's sure she did. Mr. Collins saw her going over Ingersoll's barn and come down light as a bird, he says. Now look you, Goody Ann. She never... 
Oh, good morning, Mr. Putnam. It is a providence the thing is out now. It is a providence. What's out, sir? What's? Why, her eyes is closed. Look, you, Anne. Why, that's strange. Ours is open. Your Ruth is sick. I not call it sick. The devil's touch is heavier than sick. It's death, you know? It's death driving into them forked and hoofed. Oh, pray not. Why, how does Ruth ail? She ails, as she must. She never waked this morning, but her eyes open, and she walks, and hears not, sees not, and cannot eat. Her soul is taken, surely. They say you've sent for Reverend Hale of Beverly? As a precaution only. Reverend Hale has much experience in all demonic arts, and- He has indeed, and found a witch in Beverly last year, and let you remember that. Now, Goody Anne, they only thought that we're a witch, and I'm certain there's no element of witchcraft. No witchcraft! Now look you, sir! Thomas, Thomas, I pray you, lead not to witchcraft. They will howl me out of Salem for such corruption in my house. Mr. Paris, I have taken your part in all contention here, and I would continue. But I cannot if you hold back in this. There are hurtful, vengeful spirits laying hands on these children. And tell Mr. Parrish what you have done. Reverend Parrish, I have laid seven babies unbaptized in the earth. Believe me, sir, you never saw more hardy babies born. And yet, each would wither in my arms the very night of their birth. And now this year, my Ruth, my only, I see her turning strange. And so, I thought to send her to your Tichuba. To Tichuba? What may Tichuba? Tichuba knows how to speak to the dead, Mr. Paris. Goody Anne, it is a formidable sin to conjure the dead. I take it on my soul. But who else may surely tell us what person murdered my babies? Woman! They were murdered, Mr. Paris. And mark this proof. Mark it. Last night, my Ruth were ever so close to their little spirits. I know it, sir. Don't you understand it, sir? There's a murdering witch among us, bound to keep herself in the dark. Then you were conjuring spirits last night. Not I, sir! Tituba and Ruth. Oh, Abigail, what proper payment for my charity. Now I am undone. You are not undone. Let you take hold here. Wait for no one to charge you. Declare it yourself. You have discovered witchcraft. In my house? In my house, Thomas? They will topple me with this. They will make a bit of- Your pardons? I only thought to see how Betty is. Why aren't you home? Who's with Ruth? Her grandma come. She's improved a little, I think. She gave a powerful sneeze before. Oh, there's a sign of life. I fear no more, Goody Putnam. It were a grand sneeze. Another like it will shake her wits together, I'm sure. Now look you, Mr. Paris. Let you strike out against the devil, and the village will bless you for it. Come down. Speak to them. Pray with them. They're thirsting for your word, Mr. Surely you'll pray with them. Aye, I'll lead them in a psalm. But say nothing of witchcraft yet. Mercy, you go home with your senior? Aye, Mom. How is Ruth sick? It's weirdish. I know not. She seems to walk like a dead woman since last night. Betty! Now stop this, Betty! Sit up now! Have you tried feeding her? I gave Ruth a good one, and it waked her for a minute. Here, let me have it. No, he'll be coming up! Listen now. If they be questioning us, tell them we danced. I told him as much already. Aye, and what more? He knows Tichuba conjured Ruth's sisters to come out of the grave. And what more? He saw you naked. Oh, Jesus. What will we do? The village is out. I just come from the farm. The whole country's talking witchcraft. They'll be calling us witches, Abby. They'll be calling us witches, Abby. She means to tell. I know it. Abby, we've got to. Witchery's a hanging error. A hanging like they've done in Boston two years ago. Abby, we must tell the truth. You'll only be whipped for dancing and the other thing. Oh, we'll be whipped. I never done none of it. I only look. Oh, you're a great one for looking, aren't you, Mary Warren? What a grand peeping courage you have. Mama! Betty? Mama! No, Betty, dear, wake up now! I'll beat you, Betty! I want my mama! What ails you, Betty? Your mama's dead and buried. I'll fly to mama. Let me fly! I told him everything! He knows now. He knows everything we did. You drink blood, Abby! You didn't tell him that! Betty, you never say that again. You, you did! Never. You did! You drink a charm to kill John Proctor's wife! You drink a charm to kill Giddy Proctor! Shut it! Now shut it! Now look, you! All of you! We danced. And Stitch 
conjured Ruth Putnam's dead sisters, and that is all. And mark this, let either of you breathe a word, or the edge of a word, about the other things. And I will come to you in the black of some terrible night, and I will bring a point of reckoning that will shudder you. And you know I can do it. I saw Indians smash my dear parents' heads on the pillow next to mine. And I have seen some reddish work done at night. And I can make you wish you had never seen the sun go down. Now you sit up and stop this. Abby, it's gone or she's going to die. It's a sin to call her shut it, Mary Warren. Be you foolish, Mary Warren. Be you deaf. How do you go to Salem when I forbid it? I only come to see the great doings of the world. I'll show you a great doing on your arse one of these days. Now get you home. My wife's waiting for your work. I best be off. I have my roof to wash. Good morning, Mr. Proctor. I almost forgot how strong you are, John Proctor. What's this mischief here? Oh, she's only gone silly somehow. The road past my house is a pilgrimage to Salem all morning. The town's among in witchcraft. We were dancing in the woods last night when my uncle leaped in on us. She took fright, is all. Ah, oh, you're wicked yet, aren't you? <laughs> They'll clap you in the stocks for your 20. See what mischief your uncle's brewing now. You'll put it out of mind, Abby. John, I am waiting for you every night. Abby, I never give you hope to wait for me. I have something better than hope, I think. Abby, you wipe it out of mind. I'll not be coming for you more. You're surely sporting with me. You know me better. I know how you clutched my back behind your house and sweated like a stallion whenever I come near. Or did I dream that? She put me out. You cannot pretend it were you. I saw your face when she put me out, and you loved me then, and you do now. Abby. That's a wild thing to say. A wild thing may say wild things. But not so wild, I think. I have seen you since she put me out. I have seen you nights. Abby, I have hardly stepped off my farm this seven months. I have a sense for heat, John. And yours has drawn me to my window. And I have seen you. Looking up, burning in your loneliness. I know you, John. I know you. Child. How do you call me child? Abby, I may think of you softly from time to time, but I would cut off my hand before I ever reach for you again. Wipe it out of mine, Abby. We never touch. I but we did. I but we did not. Oh, I marvel how such a strong man may let such a sickly wife be. You'll speak nothing of Elizabeth. She is blackening my name in the village. She is telling lies about me. Do you look for a weapon? You loved me, John Proctor. 
whatever sin it is, you love me yet. John, pay me, pay me. No! Baby! No! Hey, what's going on? What's she doing? No! I have not heard you worried so on this society, Mr. Proctor. I do not think I saw you at Sabbath meeting since snow flew. I have trouble enough with that I come five miles to hear him preach only hellfire and bloody damnation. Take it to heart, Mr. Paris. There are many who stay away from church these days because you hardly ever mention God anymore. Why, that's a drastic charge. It's not for you to say what is good for you to hear. I may speak my heart, I think. What are we, Quakers? We're not Quakers here yet, Mr. Proctor. And you may tell that to your followers. My followers? There is a faction. I am not blind. There is a faction and a party. Against you? Against him and all authority. Why, then I must find it and join it. He does not mean that. He confessed it now. I mean it most solemnly, Rebecca. I like not the smell of this authority. No, you cannot break charity with your minister. You are another kind, John. Clasp his hand, make your peace. I have propped a so and lumber to drag away. Let's see you, Giles. Let's find a party. He says there's a party. I have changed my opinion of this man, John. Mr. Paris, I beg your pardon. I never thought you had so much iron in you. Why, thank you, Giles. Suggest to the mind what the trouble be among us all these years. Wherefore is everybody suing everybody else? Think on it now, it's a deep thing, and dark as a pit. Why, I've been in court some six times this year. Pray you, someone take this. Oh, Mr. Hale, it's good to see you again. My, these are heavy. They must be. They are weighted with authority. <laughs> you cannot be Rebecca Nurse. I am, sir. Do you know me? It's strange how I knew you, though I suppose you look as such a good soul should. We've all heard of your great charities in Beverly. Do you know this man? Mr. Thomas Putnam and his good wife, Anne. Putnam, I have not expected such distinguished company, sir. It does not seem to help us today, Mr. Hale. We look to you to come to our home and save our child. Your child ails too? Her soul, her 
soul seems flown away. She sleeps and yet she walks. She cannot eat. She cannot eat. Tell me, do you men have afflicted children? No, no. These are farmers. John Crocker. Uh, he don't believe in witches. I've never said anything on witches one way or the other. Will you come, Giles? No, no, I think not. I have some queer questions of my own, ask this fellow. I've heard you to be a sensible man, Mr. Hale. I hope you leave some of it in Salem. Please, sir, will you take a look at my daughter? She has tried to leap out the window, and we discovered her this morning on the high road, waving her arms as though she'd fly. Tries to fly? She cannot bear to hear the Lord's name, sir. That's a sure sign of witchcraft to float. No, 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 let me instruct you. We cannot look to superstition in this. The devil is precise. The marks of his presence are definite as stone. And I must tell you, all that I shall not perceive, unless you are prepared to believe me, if I should find no bruise of hell upon her. It is agreed, sir. Good. We will abide by your judgment. Good, then. Now, sir, what were your first warning of this strangeness? Why, sir, I discovered her and my niece and ten or twelve of the other girls dancing in the forest last night. You permit dancing? No, no. They were secret. Mr. Pierce's slave has knowledge of conjuring, sir. Now, Goody Anne, we cannot be sure. Of I know it, sir. I sent my child. She should learn from Tichuba who murdered her sisters. Goody Anne! Is it the child to conjure the dead? Let God blame me. Not you, not you, Rebecca. I'll not have you judging me anymore. Is it a natural work to lose seven children before they live a day? Seven dead in childbirth? I. What book is that? Here is all the invisible world, caught, defined, and counted. In these books, the devil stands stripped of all his brute disguises. Have no fear now. We shall find him out if he has come among us. And I mean to crush him utterly if he has shown his face. Will it hurt the child, sir? I cannot tell. If she is truly in the devil's grip, we may have to rip and tear to get her free. I think I'll go then. I'm too old for this. Why, Rebecca, we may open the very boil of all our troubles today. Let's hope for that. I go to God for you, sir. I hope you do not mean we go to Satan here. I wish I knew. Come, Mr. Hale, let's get off. Sit you here. Uh, now, Mr. Hale, uh, I've always wanted to ask you, learned man, what signifies the reading of strange books? What books? Well, I don't know. She hides them. Who does this? Well, Martha, my wife. Now, I've come home many a night, and she's sitting in a corner, reading of a book. What do you make of that? Well, that's not necessarily... Well, it disturbs me. <laughs> Last night, mark this, I tried and I tried, and I could not say my prayers. And then, she closes up her book, walks out of the house, and then, mark this, I can pray again. Um, <laughs> stop at your prayer. That is strange. I'll speak further on that. Now, I'm not saying she's touched by the devil now, but... I'd like to know what kind of book she's reading and why she's hiding. All right, we'll discuss it. Now, Marjorie, if she is truly in the devil's grip, you will witness some frightful wonders in this room. So please to keep your wits about you. Mr. Putt, stand close to her in case she flies. <laughs> now, Betty, dear, will you sit up? Can you hear me? I am John Hale, Minister of Beverly. I have come to help you, dear. How could it be the devil? Why would he choose my house to strike? What victory would the devil have to win a soul already back? It is the best the devil wants, and who is better than the minister? Betty, answer Mr. Hale. Betty! Does someone afflict you, child? It need not be a man, mind you, or a woman. Perhaps some bird, invisible to others, comes to you. Perhaps a mouse, or a pig, or any beast at all. Is there some figure that bids you fly? In nomine domini sabal sweet luce ite ad inferus. Abigail, what sort of dancing were you doing with her in the forest? Why, common dancing is all. I think. I think I have to say that I saw a kettle in the grass where they were digging. That were only soup! What sort of soup were in that kettle, Abigail? Why, it, it were 
beans and lentils, I think. Mr. Paris, you did not notice, did you, any living thing in the catch? A mouse, perhaps? A spider? A, a frog? I, I do believe there were some movement in That the jumped in! We what never... jumped in? Why, a very little frog. A frog! Jumped. Abby! Abigail, it's maybe your cousin is dying. Did you call the devil? I never called him! Tichuba! Tichuba! She called the devil? I should like to speak with Tichuba. Goody Ann, bring her up. How did she call him? I know not. She spoke Barbados. Did you feel any strangeness when she called him? A sudden cold wind, perhaps, a trembling below the ground? I never saw no devil! Betty, wake up, Betty, Betty! You cannot evade, Abigail. Did your cousin drink any of the brew in that kettle? She never drank it. Did you drink it? No, sir! Did Tichuba ask you to drink it? She tried, but I refused. Why are you concealed? Have you sold yourself to Lucy? I never sold myself! I'm a good girl, I promise! She made me do it, Abby! She makes me drink blood! Blood? My baby's blood! No, no, chicken blood. I, I give her chicken blood! Woman, have you enlisted these children for the devil? I don't drunk with no devil! Why can she not wake? Are you silencing the shot? I love me, Betty! You have sent out your spirit upon this girl, have you not? No! Are you gathering no. souls? No! no. no. She no. sends her spirit on me in church! She makes me laugh at prayer! She have often laughed at prayer. She wakes me every night to go and drink blood. You beg me to conjure. You beg me, make her. Sometimes I wake and find myself standing in the open doorway, and not a stitch on my body. I always hear her laughing in my sleep. I hear her singing her Barbados songs. It's tempting, but it happens. I never. Mr. Bob, I want you to wake this child. I have no power. You most certainly do, and you will free her from it now. When did you compact with the devil? I didn't compact with no devil! You will confess yourself, Tichuba. I will take you out and rip you to your death! This woman must be hanged. She must be taken in hand. Don't hang Tichuba! I tell him I don't desire to work for him, sir! The devil? Then you saw him. Now, Tichuba, I know that when we bind ourselves to hell, it is very hard to break it. We are going to help you. Tear yourself free. Mr. Reverend, I do believe somebody else bewitches these children. Who? I don't know, sir. But the devil, he got him numerous witches. Does he? Did you, you would be a good Christian woman, would you not? I, sir, a good Christian woman. And you love God, did you? I love God with all my being. Now in God's holy name. Yes. And to his glory. <laughs> Open yourself, did you? Open yourself and let God's holy light shine. When the devil comes to you, does he ever come with another person? Perhaps another person in the village? Someone you know. Who? Who come with the devil? Sarah Good. Did you ever see Sarah Good with the devil? Or Osborne? Was a man or woman come with him? Man or woman? Was was woman? A woman, you say? What woman? I I couldn't tell. You can see her. Why could you not see her? It was on his dog and it was on his carrier. You know Salem? Salem witches? I you, believe so. You must have no fear to tell us who they are. Do you understand? We will protect you. You have confessed yourself to witchcraft, and that speaks a wish to come to heaven, son. And we will bless you, did you? Oh, God bless you, Mr. Hale. You are God's instrument, put in our hands to discover the devil's agents among us. You are selected, did you? You are chosen to help us cleanse your village. So speak utterly, did you? Turn your back on him and face God. Face God, did you? And God will protect you. God protect, did you? Who came to you with the devil? Was it two, three, four? How many? There was four. There was four! Who? Who? Their names! Their names! And I love! And there was Goody Good! Sarah Good! I, sir! And Goody Osborne! I knew it! Goody Osborne will be with me three times. My baby's always shriveled in her hands. Take courage, you must give us all their names. No. How can you bear to see this child suffering? Look at her, Tishaba. Look at her God-given innocence. Her soul is so tender. We must protect her, Tichuba. God will bless you for your help. I want to open myself. I want the 
light of God. I want the sweet love of Jesus. I danced for the devil. I saw him. I wrote in his book. I go back to Jesus. I kiss his hand. I saw Sarah Good with the devil. George Jacob's heifer. Would that please you? Ah, uh, it would. I mean to please you, Elizabeth. I know it, John. I think you're sad again. Are you? I'm so late. I thought you'd gone to Salem this afternoon. Why? I have no business in Salem. You did speak of going earlier this week. I felt better in a sense. Mary Warren's there today. Why'd you let her? You heard me forbid her go to Salem anymore. I couldn't stop her. It is a fault. It is a fault, Elizabeth. You're the mistress here, not Mary Warren. She frightened all my strength away. How may that mouse frighten you, Elizabeth? It is a mouse no more. I forbid her go, and she raises up her chin like the daughter of a prince and says, I must go to Salem, Goody Proctor. I am an official of the court. Court? What court? Aye, it is a proper court they have now. They've sent four judges out of Boston, she says. Weighty magistrates of the general court. And at the head sits the deputy governor of the province. Why? She's mad. I would to God she were. There'd be 14 people in the jail now, she says. And they'll be tried. And the court have the power to hang them too, she says. They'd never hang. The deputy governor promised hanging if they'll not confess, John. The town's gone wild, I think. She spoke of Abigail. And I thought she were a saint to hear her. Abigail brings the other girls into the court, and where she walks, the crowd will part like the sea for Israel. And folks are brought before them, and if they scream and howl and fall to the floor, the person's clapped in jail for bewitching them. Oh, it is a black mystery. I think you must go to Salem, John. I think so. You must tell them it is a fraud. Aye, it is. It is, surely. Let you go to Ezekiel Cheever. He knows you well. 
and tell him what she said to you last week at her uncle's house. She said it had naught to do with witchcraft, did she not? Aye. She did. She did. God forbid you keep that from the court, John. I think they must be told. Aye, they must. I would go to Salem now, John. Let you go tonight. I'll think on it. John, you cannot keep it. I know I cannot keep it. I said I'll think on it. Good. Then let you think on it. I'm only wondering how I may prove what she's told me. If the girl's a saint now, I think it not easy to prove she's fraud. With the town gone so silly, she told it to me in a room alone. I have no proof for it. You were alone with her? For a moment, I. Why? Then it is not as you told me. For a moment, I say. The others come in soon after. Do as you wish, then. Woman, I'll not have your suspicion. I have I'll not. not have you. Then let you not earn it. You doubt me yet? I see what I see, John. Spare me. You forget nothing and forgive nothing. Learn charity, woman. I have gone tiptoe in this house all seven months since she is gone. I have not moved from there to there without I think to please you. And still, an everlasting funeral marches around your heart. I cannot speak, but I have doubted. And every moment judged for lies, as though I come into a court when I come into this house. John, you are not open with me. You saw her with a crowd, you said. Now I'll plead my honesty no more, Elizabeth. John, I am No wrong. more! I should have roared you down when you first told me your suspicion. But I will do it. And like a Christian, I confessed. Oh, confessed! Some dream I had must have mistaken you for God that day. But you're not, Elizabeth. You're not. And let you remember. Let you look sometimes for the goodness in me. And judge me not. I do not judge you. The magistrate sits in your heart that judges you. I never thought you but a good man, John. Only somewhat bewildered. Oh, Elizabeth, your justice would freeze beer. Mary, how do you go to Salem when I forbid it? Do you mock me? I'll whip you if you dare leave this house again. I'm sick. I'm sick, Mr. Proctor. Pray, pray, hurt me not. My insides are all shuddery. I'm in the proceedings all day. And what of these proceedings here? When will you proceed to keep the house as you are paid nine pounds a year to do? I made a gift for you today, Goody Proctor. I had to sit long hours in a chair and pass the time with sewing. Why, thank you. It is a fair profit. I will wake up early tomorrow morning and clean the house. I must sleep now. Mary, is it true there be 14 women arrested? No, sir. There be 39 now. Why, she's Whitman. What ails you, child? Goody Osborne will hang. Hang? Hang, you say? I... The deputy governor will commit it?
haven't used? So this afternoon, and now tonight, I go from house to house. I come now from Rebecca Nurse's. Rebecca's charged? God forbid such a one be charged. She is, however, mentioned somewhat. I thought, sir, to put some questions as to the Christian character of this house, if you'll permit me. Why? We have no fear of questions, sir. Good then. In the book of record that Mr. Ferris keeps, I note that you are rarely in the church on Saturday. No, sir. You are mistaken. Twenty-six times in seventeen months, sir. I must call that rare. Will you tell me why you are so absent? I never knew I must account to that man for whether I go to church or stay at home. My wife was sick this winter, so I am told. But to you, mister, why could you not come alone? I surely did when I could. And when I could not, I prayed in this house. Mr. Proctor, your house is not a church. Your theology must tell you that. It does, sir. It does. And yet a Christian on Sabbath day must be in church. Tell me, you have three children. I, boys. How comes it that only two are baptized? I like it not that Mr. Parrish should lay his hands upon my child. I see no light of God in that man. I'll not conceal it. I must say, Proctor, that is not for you to decide. The man's ordained. Therefore, the light of God is in him. 
What's your suspicion, Mr. Hale? No, no, I have no- I nailed the roof upon the church. I hung the door. No, did you? That's a good sign. It may be you have been too quick to bring the man's book, but you cannot think we ever desired the destruction of religion. I think that's on your mind, is it not? I- I have. There is a softness in your record, sir. A softness. I think, maybe, we have been too hard with Mr. Paris. But sure we never loved the devil here. Tell me, Elizabeth, do you know your commandments? I surely do. There be no mark of blame upon my life, Mr. Hale. I am a covenanted Christian woman. And you, sir? I'm sure I do, sir. Let's you repeat them, if you will. The commandments? Aye. Thou shalt not kill. Aye. Thou shalt not steal. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's goods, nor make unto thee any graven image. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord in vain. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's goods. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Thou shalt remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Thou shalt honor thy father and mother. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. You have said that twice, sir. <laughs> Aye. Adultery, John. Aye. You see, sir, between the two of us, we know them all. <laughs> I think it'd be a small fault. <laughs> Theology, sir, is a fortress. No crack in a fortress may be accounted small. We never loved the devil here, sir. I pray it. I pray it, dear. Well, then, I'll, I'll bid you good night. Mr. Hale, I do think you are suspecting me somewhat, are you not? Goody Proctor, I do not judge you. My duty is to add what I may to the godly wisdom of the court. I pray you both good health and good fortune. Good night, sir. I think you must tell him, John. What's that? Will you tell him? I have no witnesses. I cannot prove it except my word be taken. But I know the children's sickness had not to do with witchcraft. Not to do? Mr. Parrish discovered them sporting in the woods. They were startled and took sick. Who told you this? Abigail Williams. Abigail? Aye. Abigail Williams told you it had not to do with witchcraft? She told me the day you came, sir. Why? Why did you keep this? I never knew until tonight that the world had gone down with this nonsense. Nonsense? Mr. I have myself examined Tichibos, Sarah Good, and numerous others that have confessed to dealing with witchcraft. They have confessed it. And why not? If they must be hanged for denying it. There are them that will swear to anything for the hang. Have you never thought of that? I have. I have indeed. And you, would you testify to this in court? I had not reckoned with going into court, but if I must, I will. Do you falter here? I falter nothing. I only wonder if my story will be credited in such a court. John. John, what's the matter? They take my wife. And is Rebecca. Rebecca's in the jail? I'm Chief come and take her in his wagon. We've only just now come in the jail, and they'll not even let us in to see them. They've surely gone wild now, Mr. Hale. Reverend Hale, can you not speak to the deputy governor? I'm sure he's safe. Frank, calm yourself, Mr. Nurse. My wife is the very brick and mortar of the church, Mr. Hale. And Martha Corey, there cannot be a woman closer yet to God than Martha. How is Rebecca charged, Mr. Nurse? For murder, she's charged. For the marvelous and supernatural murder of Goody Putnam's babies. What am I to do, Mr. Hale? Let you rest upon the justice of the court. The court will send her home. I, I know it. You can't mean she'll be tried in court. Nurse, though our hearts break, we cannot flinch. These are new times, sir. There is a misty plot afoot, so subtle, we should be criminal to cling to old respects and ancient friendships. I have seen too many frightful proofs in court. The devil is alive in Salem, and we dare not quail to follow wherever the accusing finger points. How may such a woman murder children? Man, remember, until an hour before the devil fell, God thought him beautiful enough. I never said my wife were a witch, Mr. Hale. I only said to read books. <clears throat> good evening to you, Proctor. Why, Mr. Cheever, good evening to you, sir. Good evening, all. Good evening, Mr. Hale. I 
hope you come not on business of court. I do, Proctor. I, I am clerk of court now, you know. It's a pity, Ezekiel, that an honest tailor might have gone to heaven. You must burn in hell. You'll burn for this. Do you know it? You know yourself I must do as I'm told. Now, believe me, Proctor, how heavy be the law. All its tonnage I carry on my back tonight. I have a warrant for your wife. You said she were not charged! I know nothing of it. Who charged her? Why, Abigail Williams charged her. On what proof? What proof? Proctor, I have little time. The court gave me search your house, but I like not to search a house. So will you hand me any poppets that your wife may keep here? Poppets? I never kept no poppets. Not since I were a girl. I spy a poppet. <laughs> oh, why, this is Mary's. Would you please give it to me? Has the court discovered a text in Poppins now? Do you keep any others in this house? No, nor this one until tonight. What signifies a poppet? Why, they say a poppet, poppet may signify. Now, woman, will you please to come with me? She will not! Fetch Mary, Elizabeth. No, no, I'm forbid to leave her from my sight. You will leave her out of sight and out of mind. Fetch Mary, Elizabeth. What signifies a poppet, Mr. Chief? Why, a poppet, a poppet may signify that she, that she. Why, this, this, what's there? Why, it's a needle. Herrick, Herrick, it is a needle. What signifies a needle? The girl, the Williams girl, Abigail Williams, sir. She sat to dinner at Reverend Paris's house tonight, and without word nor warning, she falls to the floor like a struck beast, he says, and screamed a scream a bull would weep to hear. And he goes to save her, and stuck two inches in the flesh of her belly, he draw a needle out, and demanded of her how she came to be so stabbed, he testifies that we were wise from familiar spirit that pushed it in. Why, she done it herself! I hope you're not taking this for proof, mister. Tis hard proof. I find here a poppet Goody Proctor keeps. I have found it, sir, and in the belly of the poppet a needle was stuck. Mary, how did this poppet come into my house? It is your poppet, is it not? It, it is. And how did it come into my house? Why, I, I made it in court today, and I, I, I give it to Goody Proctor tonight. What say you now, sir? Mary, a needle have been found stuck inside this poppet. Why, I mean no harm by it. You stuck the needle in yourself? I did. What say you now? Child, are you certain this be your natural memory? May it be, perhaps, that someone conjures you even now to say this? Conjures me? Why, why, why no, sir. I'm entirely myself, I think. <laughs> I'm Susanna Walcott. She saw me making it in court. Ask Abby. Abby sat beside me while I made it. Mary Warren, you charge a cold and cruel murder on Abigail Williams. Murder? I charge Abigail no- Abigail was stabbed tonight. A needle was found stuck into her belly. And she charges me? I. What? The girl is murdered. She must be ripped out of the world. You've heard that, sir. Ripped out of the world. Eric, you heard her. Out with you! Proctor, you dare not touch the war. Out with you! You threat the deputy governor's war, man. Damn the deputy governor! Out of my house! Now, Proctor, Proctor! Get me gone with him! You're a broken minister now! Proctor, if she is innocent... If course, she is innocent? Why do you never wonder if Paris be innocent? Or Abigail? This war's vengeance! I'll not give my wife to vengeance! Oh, go, John! You will not go! I have nine men outside. You cannot keep her. The law binds me, John. I cannot budge. Will you see her taken? Proctor, the court is... Punch is fire! God will not let you wash your hands of this! John! I think I must go with them. When the children wake, speak nothing of witchcraft. It will frighten them. I will bring you home. I will bring you soon. Oh, John, bring me soon. I will fall like an ocean on thy court. Fear nothing, Elizabeth. I will fear nothing. Tell the children I've got to visit someone safe. Herrick? Herrick, don't shake her! And yet silent answer is fraud! You know it's fraud! What case, you man? In God's name, John, I cannot help myself. I must chain them all. And I'll let you keep inside this house till I'm gone. Mr. Proctor, 
Out of my sight! Sure, Dr. Sheridan. When I have heard in her favor, I will not fear to testify in court. You are a coward. Though you be ordained in God's own tears, you are a coward now. Prophet, I cannot think that God be provoked so grandly by such a petty cause. The jails are packed. Our greatest judges sit in Salem now, and hang it's promised. Man, we must look to cause proportionate. With their murder done, perhaps they never brought to light. Abomination, some secret blasphemy that speaks to heaven. Let you counsel among yourselves. Think on your village, and what may have drawn from heaven such thundering wrath upon you all. I shall pray God, open up our eyes. I never heard no murder done in Salem. Leave me, Francis. Leave me. John, tell me. Are we lost? Go home now, Giles. We'll speak on it tomorrow. Come early, eh? Aye. Go home now. Good night, then. She worried, Your Honor. When I got her to the court last week, she said you were sick. She 
She's been striving with her soul all week, Your Honor. She comes now to tell the truth of this to you. Who is this? John Proctor, sir. Elizabeth Proctor is my wife. Beware this man, Your Excellency. This man is mischief. I think you must give the girl, sir. Yes. What would you tell us, Mary Warren? She never saw no spirits, sir. Never saw no spirits? Never. She assigned depositions, no, sir. No, no. I accept no depositions. Do you know, Mr. Proctor, that the entire contention of the state in these trials is that the voice of heaven is speaking through the children? I know that, sir. And you, Mary Warren, how came you to cry out people for sending their spirits against you? That were pretense, sir. I cannot hear you. It were pretense, she says. Ah. The other girls, Susanna Walcott and the others, they are also pretending. I, sir. Indeed. Your Excellency, surely you cannot let so vile a lie be spread in open court. Indeed not, but it strike hard upon me that she would dare come here with such a tale. Mr. Proctor, are you certain in your conscience that your evidence is the truth? It is, and you will surely know it. And you thought to declare this revelation in the open court for the public? I thought I would. I, with your permission. Now, sir, what is your purpose in so doing? Why, I... I would free my wife, sir. There lurks nowhere in your heart, nor hidden in your spirit, any desire to undermine this court? Why, no, sir. <clears throat> I... Your Excellency... Mr. Cheever. I think it be my duty, sir. You'll not deny it, John. When we came to take his wife, he damned the court and wrecked your warrant. Now you have it! He did that, Mr. Mayor? Aye, he did. It were a temper, sir. I knew not what I did. Mr. Proctor. Aye, sir. Have you ever seen the devil? No, sir. You are, in all respects, a gospel Christian? I am, sir. I tell you straight, mister. I have seen marvels in this court. I have seen people choked before my eyes by spirits. I have seen them stuck by pins and slashed by daggers. I have, until this moment, not the slightest reason to believe that the children may be deceiving me. Do you understand my meaning? Excellency, does it not strike upon you that so many of these women have lived so long with such a Do you right take the gospel, Mr. Proctor? I read the gospel. I think not, or surely you should know that Cain were an upright man, and yet he did kill Abel. Aye, God tells us that. But who tells us that Rebecca Nurse murdered seven babies by sending out her spirit on them? It is the children only. And this one will swear she lied to you. Aye, she's the one. Mr. Proctor, this morning your wife sent me a claim in which she states that she is pregnant now. My wife's pregnant? There be no sign of it. We examined her body. But if she says she is pregnant, then she must be. That woman will let it never lie, Mr. Danforth. She will not? Never, sir. Never. We have thought it too convenient to be credited. However, if I should tell you that I will let her be kept another month, and if she begin to show her natural signs, you will have her living yet another year until she is delivered. What say you to that? Come now. You say your only purpose is to save your wife. Will you drop this charge? I... I think I cannot. Then your purpose is somewhat larger. He's come to overthrow this court, Your Honor. These are my friends. Their wives are also accused. I judge you not. I am ready to hear your evidence. I am no lawyer, so I'll... Pure in heart need no lawyers. Proceed as you will. Will you read this first, sir? It's a sort of testament. The people signing it declare their good opinion of Rebecca and my wife and Martha Corey. Their good opinion. These are all land-holding farmers, members of the church. If you'll notice, sir, they've known the women many years and never saw no sign they had dealings with the devil. How many names are here? Ninety-one, Your Excellency. These people should be summoned for questioning. Mr. Danforth, I gave these people my word no harm would come to them for signing this. This is a clear attack upon the court. Is every defense an attack upon the court? Can no one? These are all covenanted Christians, sir. Then I am sure they may have nothing to fear. Mr. Cheever have warrants drawn for all of these. Arrest for examination. Now, sir, what other information do you have for us? You may sit, Mr. Nurse. <laughs> 
I've brought trouble on these people. I have. Old men, you have not hurt these people, if they be of good conscience. But you must understand, sir, that a person is either with this court, or he must be counted against it. There be no road between. She's not party, I see. No, she's not, sir. Mary, remember the angel, what he said to the boy Tobias. I... Do that which is good, and no harm shall come to thee. I... Come, then, we wait you. My deposition, John. You remind. Aye. This is Mr. Corey's deposition. Oh. What lawyer drew this, Corey? You know I never hired a lawyer in my life, Hathorne. It is very well phrased, my compliments. Mr. Paris, if Mr. Putnam is in the court, will you bring him in? You have no legal training, Mr. Corey? Well, I have the very best, sir. I am 33 times in court in my life, and always a plaintiff, too. <laughs> oh. Then you're much put upon. I'm never put upon. I know my rights, sir, and I will have them. <laughs> ah, there he is. Mr. Putt, I have here an accusation by Mr. Corey against you. He states that you coldly prompted your daughter to cry witchery upon George Jacobs that is now in jail. It is a lie. Mr. Putnam states that your charge is a lie. What say you to that? A fart on Thomas Putnam. That's what I have to say to that. What proof do you submit for your charge? My proof is there. If Jacobs hangs for a witch, he forfeit up his property. That's law. And there's no one but Putnam with the coin to buy such a great piece. This man is killing his neighbors to steal their land. But proof, sir, proof. My proof is there. I have it from an honest man who heard Putnam say it. He said the day his daughter cried out on Jacobs, she'd given him a fair gift of land. And the name of this man? What man? The name of the man that give you this information. Why? I cannot give you no name. And why not? You know damn well why not. He'll lay in a jail cell if I give his name. This is contempt of the court, Mr. Danforth. You will surely tell us the name. I cannot give you no name, sir. I cannot. I mentioned my wife's name once, and I'll burn in hell long enough for that. I stand mute. In that case, I have no choice but to arrest you in contempt of this court. Do you know that? This is a hearing. You cannot clap me for contempt of a hearing. Oh, it is a proper lawyer. Do you wish me to declare the court in full session here, or will you give me good reply? I, I cannot give you no name, sir. I cannot. You are a foolish old man. Mr. Cheever, begin the record. The court is now in session. I ask you, Mr. Court. Your Honor, he has the story in confidence, sir. The and devil just... lives on such confidences. Without such confidences, there could be no conspiracy, Your Honor. I think it must be broken. Old men, if your informants tell the truth, let him come here openly, like a decent man. But if he hide in anonymity, I must know why. Now, sir, the government and the central church demand of you the name of him that reported Mr. Thomas Putnam a common murderer. Excellence! We cannot believe it's more. There's a prodigious fear of this court in the country. Then there is a prodigious guilt in this country. Are you afraid to be questioned here? I may only fear the Lord, sir. But there is fear in the country, nevertheless. Reproach me not with the fear in the country. There is fear in the country because there is a moving plot to topple Christ in the country. But it does not follow that everyone accused is part of it. No uncorrupted man may fear this court, Mr. Hale. None. You are under arrest in contempt of this court. Now sit you down and take counsel with yourself, or you will be set in the jail until you decide to answer all questions. I'll cut your throat! I know that! I'll kill you! He shouts! My peace will prove ourselves! We'll prove it all now. Mary, you cannot be. Remember what the angel said to the boy. Hold it now. There is your rock. This is Mary Warren's deposition. I would ask you to remember, sir, while you read it, that until two weeks ago, she were no different than the other children are today. You heard her scream. She howled. She swore familiar spirits choked her. She even testified that Satan, in the form of women now in jail, tried to win her soul away. And then, when she refused... We know all this. Aye, sir. She swears now that she never saw Satan, nor any spirit vague or clear that Satan may have sent to hurt her. And she declares her friends are lying now. 
Excellency, a moment. I think this goes to the heart of the matter. Now look you, Mr. Hale. Excellency, I have signed 72 death warrants. I am a minister of the Lord, and I dare not take a life without there be a proof so immaculate no slightest qualm of conscience may doubt it. Mr. Hale, you surely do not doubt my justice. I have this morning signed away the soul of Rebecca Nurse, Your Honor. I'll not conceal it. My hand shakes yet as with a wound. Mr. Hale, believe me, for a man of such terrible learning, you are most bewildered. I hope you'll forgive me. I have been 32 years at the bar, sir. But this child claims the girls are not truthful. And if they are not... That is precisely what I'm about to consider. Sir. Her deposition, Mr. Proctor. I should like to question... Mr. Paris, I bid you be silent. Mr. Cheever, will you go into the court and bring the children here? Mary Warren, how came you to this turnabout? Has Mr. Proctor threatened you for this deposition? No, sir. Has he ever threatened you? No, sir. Has he threatened you? No, sir. Then you tell me that you sat in my court, callously lying, when you knew people would hang by your evidence? Answer me. I, I, I did, sir. How were you instructed in your life? Do you not know that God damns all liars? Or is it now that you lie? No, sir. I'm with God now. You are with God now. I, sir. I will tell you this. You are either lying now, or you were lying in the court. And in either case, you have committed perjury, and you will go to jail for it. Do you know that, Mary? I cannot lie no more. I'm with God. I'm with God. <clears throat> Ruth Putnam's not in the court, sir, nor the other children. These will be sufficient. Sit you down, children. to blindness. It may well be that Mary Warren has been conquered by Satan and is sent here to distract our sacred purpose. If so, her neck will break for it. But if she speak true, I bid you now drop your guile and confess your pretense, for a quick confession will go easier with you. Abigail Williams, rise. Is there any truth in this? No, sir. Will either of you change your positions, or do you force me to hard questioning? I have not to change, sir. She lies. You would still go on with this? I, sir. A poppet were found in Mr. Proctor's house, stabbed by a needle. Mary Warren claims you sat beside her in the court while she made it, saw her make it, and witnessed how she herself stuck a needle into it for safekeeping. What say you to that? It is a lie, sir. <coughs> you worked for Mr. Proctor. Did you see poppets in that house? Goody Proctor always kept poppets. Your Honor, my wife never kept no poppets. Mary Warren confesses it was her poppet. <clears throat> Your Excellency. Mr. Chu. When I spoke to Goody Proctor in that house, she said she never kept no poppets. But she did say she did keep poppets when she were a girl. She has not been a girl these 15 years, Your Honor. But a poppet will keep 15 years, will it not? It will keep if it is kept. But Mary Warren confesses she never saw no poppets, nor anyone else. Why could there not have been poppets hid where no one ever saw them? There might also be a dragon with five legs in my house, but no one has ever seen it. We are here, Your Honor, precisely to discover that which no one has ever seen. Mr. Danforth, what profit this girl to turn herself about? What may Mary Warren gain except hard questioning and worse? 
You are charging Abigail Williams with a marvelous cool plot to murder. Do you know that? I do, sir. I believe she means to murder. This child would murder your wife? It is not a child. Now hear me, sir. In the sight of the congregation, she were twice this year put out of this meeting house for laughter during prayer. What's this? Laughter during Excellency! She was under Tinchba's power at that time, but she is solemn now. Ah, she's solemn. It goes to hang people! Quiet, man. Surely it have no bearing on the matter. He charges contemplation of murder. Aye. Continue, Mr. Proctor. Mary, tell the governor how you danced in the woods. Your Honor, ever since I come to Salem, this man is blackening my name. In a moment, sir. What is this dancing? I. Mr. Proctor! Abigail leads the other girls into the woods, Your Honor. And they have danced there naked. Your Honor, this man Mr. is- Mr. Parrish discovered them himself in the dead of night. There's the child she is. Mr. Parrish. I can only say, sir, that I never saw any of them naked. But you discovered them dancing in the woods, Abigail? Excellency, when I first arrived from Beverly, Mr. Parrish told me that. Do you deny it, Mr. Parrish? I do not. But I never saw any of them naked. Excellency, will you permit me? Pray, proceed. You say you never saw no spirits, Mary. Were never threatened or afflicted by any manifest of the devil or the devil's agents? No, sir. And yet, when you were confronted by people accused of witchery in the court, you fainted, saying the spirits came out of their bodies to choke you. That were pretense, sir. I cannot hear you. Pretense, sir. But you did turn cold. Did you not? I myself picked you up many times, and your skin were icy. They were pretending, Your Honor. They're all marvelous pretenders. Then can she pretend to faint now? Now? Why not? There are no attacking spirits here, for none in this courtroom are accused of witchcraft. Therefore, let her turn herself cold. Let her pretend to be attacked by spirits. Let her faint. Faint! <laughs> Ah, faith, and prove to us how you pretend in the courts so many times. I, I cannot think now. Oh, I... Can you not pretend it? I, I, I have no sense of it. I... Why? What is lacking now? I, I, I cannot tell. I... Might it be that here we have no afflicting spirit loose, but in the court... There were some. I never saw no spirits. Then see no spirits now, and prove to us you can make yourself faint as you claim. I, I, I cannot. Then you will really confess, will you not? It were attacking spirits made you faint. No, sir. I. Your Honor, this is all a trick to black the court. It is not a trick. I, I, I used to faint because because I thought I saw spirits. Thought you saw them. But, but, but I did not, Your Honor. How would you think you saw spirits unless you saw them? I, I, I cannot tell how, but I, I did. I, I heard the other girls screaming, and, and, and you, Your Honor, you seemed to believe them, and I... It, it were only sport at the beginning. But, but, but then the whole world started crying spirits. Spirits and I, I promise you, Mr. Danforth, I only thought I saw them, but I did not. Surely your excellency is not taken by so simple a lie. Abigail, is it possible that the spirits you have seen are illusion only? Some deception that may cross your mind. This is a base question, sir. Child, I would have you consider. I have been hurt, Mr. Danforth. I have seen my blood running out. I have been near to murder every day because I've done my duty pointing out the devil's people. And this is my reward? To be mistrusted, denied, questioned like a child. child. I do not mistrust. Let you beware, Mr. Danforth. Think you to be so mighty that the powers of hell may not turn your wits? Beware of it. There is... What is it, child? I... I know not. A wind, a cold wind has come. Abby! Your Honor, I freeze! There
They're pretending. Mary, do you send a shadow on me? Lord, save me! I freeze, I freeze. This is a wind, a wind! I mean, don't do that! Mary Warren, do you witch her? I say to you, do you spend, send your spirit out? Sir, and put her out on the high road. She thinks the death of me on my wife's grave. And well she might, for I thought of her softly. God help me, I lost it. And there is a promise in such sweat. But it's a horse vengeance, and you must see it. I set myself entirely into your hands. I know you must see it now. You deny every scrap and tittle of this? If I must answer that, I will leave and I will not come back again! I have made a bell of my honor. I have run the doom of my good name. You will believe me, Mr. Danforth. My wife is innocent, except she knew a whore when she saw one. What look do you give me? I'll not have such lips! You will remain where you are. Mr. Paris, go into the court and bring good wife Proctor out. Your Honor, this bring is Bring her right. out! And tell her not one word of what's been spoken here. And let you knock before you enter. Now, we shall touch the bottom of this swamp. Your wife, sir, would you say is an honest woman? Aye, sir. In her life, she had never lied. There are them that cannot sing, and them that cannot weep. My wife cannot lie. I have paid much to learn, sir. And when she put this girl out of your house, she put her out for a harlot? Aye, sir. And knew her for a harlot? Aye, sir. She knew her for a harlot. Good then. And if she say it were for harlotry, may God spread his mercy on you. Hold. Turn your back. Turn your back. Do likewise. Now let neither of you turn to face Goody Proctor. No one in this room is to speak one word or raise a gesture, I or nay. Enter. Mr. Cheever, report this testimony in all exactness. Are you ready? Ready, sir. Come here, woman. You will look at me only and not at your husband, in my eyes only. Good, sir. You are given to understand that at one time you dismissed your servant, Abigail Williams. That is true, sir. For what cause did you dismiss her? You will look in my eyes only and not at your husband. The answer is in your memory, and you need no help to give it to me. Why did you dismiss Abigail Williams? She dissatisfied me and my husband. In what way dissatisfied you? She Woman, look at me. Was she slobbing, lazy? What disturbance did she cause? Your Honor, I, in that time I was sick. And my husband is a good and righteous man, sir. He is never drunk as some are, nor wasting his time, but always at his work. But in my sickness, you see, sir, I was sick a long time after my last baby, and I thought.
thought I saw him somewhat turning from me. And this girl... Look at me. I, sir. Abigail Williams. What of Abigail Williams? I... I came to think he fancied her. And so, one night, I... I lost my wits, I think, and I put her out on the high road. Your husband, did he indeed turn from you? My husband is a goodly man, sir. So he did not turn from you. He... Look at me. To your knowledge, has John Proctor ever committed the crime of lechery? Answer me. Is your husband a lecher? No, sir. Remove her, Marshal. Elizabeth, tell the truth. She has spoken. Remove her. Elizabeth, I have confessed what? myself. Just <laughs> not say my name. Answer me. It is a natural lie to tell. I beg you, stop now before another is condemned. I may shut my conscience to it no more. Private vengeance is working through this testimony. From the beginning, this man has struck me true. And by my oath to heaven, I believe him now. And I pray you call back his wife. She spoke nothing of lechery, and this man has lied. I believe him. This girl has always struck me false. She has. Ah! You will not be caught, be gone, I say! What is it, Chuck? What's there? Girls, why are you? It's on the deep behind the rafter. Where? What? Why do you come, yellow bird? Where's the bird? I see no bird, Mr. Hale. Be quiet. Do you see a bird? Be quiet! Any of Mary, this is a black art to change your shape. No, I cannot. I cannot stop my mouth. It's God's work I do. Your power, you will not deny it. What say you? Excellent. I will have nothing from you, Mr. 
pale? Do you confess yourself the foul with hell? What say you? I say. I say God is dead! Hear it! Hear it! A fire! A fire is burning! I hear the boot of Lucifer! I see his filthy face! And it is my face! And yours, Danforth! For them that quail to bring men out of ignorance, as I have quailed, and as you quail now, when you know in all your black hearts that this be God, God damns our time especially! And we will burn! We will burn together! Marshal, take him and Corey with him to the jail! You are pulling down heaven! And raising up a whore! I denounce these proceedings! Mr. Hale! I denounce these proceedings! I quit this court! Mr. Hale! Mr. Hale! He goes among them that will hang, sir, and he prays with them. He sits with good nurse now, and Mr. Parrish with him. Indeed. That man hath no authority to enter here, Marshal. Why have you let him in? Why, Mr. Parrish command me, sir. I cannot deny him. Are you drunk, Marshal? No, no, sir. It is a bitter night, and I have no fire in it. Fetch Mr. Parrish. Aye, sir. There's a prodigious stench in this place. I have only now cleared out the people for you. Beware of hard drink, Marshal. Aye, sir. Excellency, I wonder if it would be wise to let Mr. Paris so continuously with the presence. I think sometimes the man has a mad look these days. Mad? I met him yesterday, coming out of his house, and I bid him good morning, and he wept and went his way. I wonder if it be well to let him to let the village see him. Perhaps he have some sorrow? <clears throat> I think it be the cows, sir. Cows? There be so many cows wandering the high roads now that their masters are all in the jails, and much disagreement who they will belong to now. I know Mr. Paris be arguing with farmers all yesterday. There is great contention, sir, about the cows. Contention make them weep, sir. There were always a man that would weep for contention. Hmm. Oh, good morning, Your Excellency. My apologies for waking you, sir. Thank you for coming. Good morning, Judge Hatton. Reverend Hale have no right to- Excellency, hear me. It is a providence. Reverend Hale has returned to bring Rebecca Nurse to God. He bids her confess? Hear me. Rebecca have not given me a word this three months since she came. Now she sits with him and Martha Corey and her sister and two or three others, and he pleads with them, confess their crimes and save their lives. Why, this is indeed a providence. And they soften, they soften. Not yet. Not yet. But I thought to summon you that we might think on whether it be not wise to. <clears throat> I had thought to put a question, sir, and hope you will not be. Mr. Paris, be plain. What troubles you? My niece, sir. My niece has vanished. Vanished? I thought to tell you about it earlier in the week. Why? How long has she gone? This be the third night, sir. You see, she told me she would spend the night with Mercy Lewis. And then the next day, when she has not returned, I sent to Mr. Lewis to inquire. He tells me that Mercy told him she would stay the night at my house. They are both gone. They are, sir. I will send a party for them. Where may they be? I think they be aboard a boat, sir. My daughter tells me she heard them speaking of boats. And tonight, I discovered my, my strong box is broke into. They have robbed you. Thirty-one pound is gone. I am penniless. Mr. Paris, you are a brainless man. <laughs> Excellency, I beg you, postpone these hangings. There will be no postponement. You must pardon me. They will not budge. You mistake me, Mr. Hale. I cannot pardon these when twelve are already executed for the same crime. It is not just. Rebecca will not confess? Excellency, the sun will rise in a few moments. I must have more time. Now hear me. 
and beguile yourselves no more. I will not hear a single plea for pardon or postponement. Them that will not confess will hang. Twelve are already executed. The names of these seven are given out, and the village expects to see them die this morning. Postponement now speaks floundering on my part. Reprieve or pardon must cast doubt upon the guilt of them that died till now. Have you spoken with them all, Mr. Hay? All but Proctor. What's He's in the dungeon. What's Proctor's way now? He sits like some great bird. You'd not know he lived, except he will take food from time to time. His wife? His wife must be well on with child now? She is, sir. What think you, Mr. Paris? You have closer knowledge of this man. Might her presence soften him? It might. She had not seen him this three months since she came. I should fetch her. Is he yet adamant? Has he struck at you again? No, sir, he cannot. He is chained to the wall now. Fetch good wife Proctor here, then let you bring him up. I sir. Excellency, if you postpone for a week, and publish to the town that you are striving for their confessions, that speak mercy on your part, not falter. You baffle me, sir. Why have you returned here? Why it is all simple. I come to do the devil's work. I come to counsel Christians they should belie themselves. There's blood on my head. Can you not see the blood on my head? Hush. Goody Proctor. I hope you are hearty. I am yet six months before my time. Pray, be at your ease. We come not for your life. We... Mr. Hale, will you speak with the woman? Goody Proctor, your husband is... Marked to hang this morning. I have heard of it. You know, do you not, that I, I have no connection with the court. I come of my own, Goody Proctor. I would save your husband's life. For if he is taken, I count myself his murderer. Do you understand me? What do you want of me? Goody Proctor, I have this three month gone like our Lord into the wilderness. I have sought a Christian way. For damnation's doubled on a minister who counsels men to lie. Lest you not mistake your duty, as I mistook my own. It is a mistaken law that leads you to sacrifice. Life, woman, life is God's most precious gift. No principle, however glorious, may justify the taking of it. I beg you, prevail upon your husband to confess. Let him give his lie. Quail not before God's judgment in this, for it may well be that God damns a liar less than he that throws away his life for pride. Will you plead with him? I cannot think he will listen to another. I think that be the devil's argument. <sighs> Goody Proctor, you are not summoned here for disputation. Be there no wifely tenderness within you? He will die with the sunrise, your husband. Do you understand that? Come, will you contend with him? Take her away. It profit nothing she should speak with him. Herrick, bring Proctor here. Let me speak with him, Excellency. You'll strive with him? Will you plead for his confession, or will you not? Let me speak with him. I promise nothing. Pray, leave them, Excellency. Mr. Proctor, you have been notified. I see light in the sky, mister, that you take counsel with your wife. May God lead you now. The child? It grows. There is no word of the boys? Farewell. Rebecca Samuel keeps them. You have not seen them? I have not. You are a marvel, Elizabeth. You have been tortured? Aye. They come for my life now. I know it. 
none have yet confessed? There be many confess. Who are they? There be a hundred or more, they say. Goody Ballard is one. Isaiah Goodkind is one. There be many. And Rebecca? Not Rebecca. She's one foot in heaven now. <coughs> Not may hurt her more. And Giles? You have not heard of it? I hear nothing, or I am kept. Giles is dead. When were he hanged? He were not hanged. It is the law, for he could not be condemned a wizard without he answer the indictment, I or nay. Then how does he die? They press him, John. Press? Great stones they lay upon his chest until he plead I or they. <coughs> they say he give them but two words. More weight, he says. And die. More weight. Aye. It were a fearsome man, Giles Corey. I have been thinking I would confess to them, Elizabeth. What say you, if I give them that? I cannot judge you, John. What would you have me do? As you will, I would have it. I want you living, John, that's sure. And Giles' wife, have she confessed? She will not. It is a pretense, Elizabeth. What is? <laughs> I cannot mount the gibbet like a saint. I am not that man. My honesty is broke, Elizabeth. I am no good man. And yet you've not confessed till now. That speak goodness in you. Spite only keeps me silent. It is hard to give a lie to dogs. I would have your forgiveness, Elizabeth. John. It comes to not that I should forgive you, if you'll not forgive yourself. It is not my soul, John, it is yours. Only be sure of this, for I know it now. Whatever you will do, it is a good man, does it? I have read my heart this three months, John. I have sins of my own to count. Takes a cold wife to prompt lechery. Enough, enough. Better you should know me. No, I will not hear it. I know you. You take my sins upon you, John. No, I take my own, my own. John, I counted myself so plain, so poorly made, no honest love could come to me. Suspicion kissed you when I did. I never knew how I should say my love. It were a cold house I kept. What say you, Crawford? The sun is soon up. Do what you will, but let none be your judge. There be no higher judge under heaven than Proctor is. Forgive me. Forgive me, John. I never knew such goodness in the world. Would you ever give them this? Say it. Would you ever give them such a lie? You would not. Tongues of fire were sent you. You would not. It is evil. Good then. It is evil, and I do it. Praise to God, man. Praise to God. You will be blessed in heaven for this. Mr. Cheever, are you ready? Why well, must it be written? Why, for the good instruction of the village. This we shall post upon the church door. Where is the marshal? Marshal? Marshal her! Now, sir, will you speak clearly and directly?
directly to the point for Mr. Cheever's sake. Did you see the devil? I, I did. Praise God. And when he come to you, what were his demand? Did he bid you to do his work upon the earth? He did. And you bound yourself to his service? I come did. In, come in, come in. Uh, John, you're well, then. Eh? Courage, man, courage. Let her witness your good example, that she may come to God herself. Say on, Mr. Proctor, did you bind yourself to the devil's service? Why, John! I did. Now, woman, you see it profit nothing to keep this conspiracy any further. Come, will you confess yourself with him? John, God send his mercy on you. I say, will you confess yourself? Why, it is a lie. It is a lie. How may I dare myself? I cannot. Mr. Proctor, when you were with the devil, did you ever see Rebecca Nurse in his company? No, I did not. Did you ever see her sister, Mary Easty, with the devil? I did not. Did you ever see Martha Corey with the devil? No, I did not. Did you ever see anyone with the devil? No, I did not. Proctor, you mistake me. I am not empowered to trade your life for a lie. You most certainly have seen some person with the devil. A score of people have already testified they saw this woman with the devil. Then it is proved. Why must I say it? Why must you say it? Why, you should rejoice to say it, if your soul is truly purged of any love for hell. They think to go like saints. I like not to spoil their names. Mr. Proctor, do you think they go like saints? This one never thought she had done the devil's work. Proctor, you must state your duty here. It matters nothing what she thought. She is convicted of the unnatural murder of children and you of sending your spirit out upon Mary Warren. Your soul alone is at issue here, and you will prove its whiteness, for you cannot live in a Christian country. Now, sir, will you tell me what persons conspire I to... speak my own sins. I cannot judge another. I have no tongue for it. Excellency, it is enough that he confess himself. Let him cite it. Let him cite it. It is a great service, sir. It is a weighty name. The village will be moved that Proctor confess. I beg you, sir, let him sign it. The sun is up, Excellency. Come, men, sign your testimony. Give it to me. You've all witnessed it. It is enough. You will not sign it. You have all witnessed it. What more is needed? Do you sport with me? You will sign your name when it is no confession, sir. Praise be to the Lord. If you please, sir. No. Mr. Proctor, I must. Have no, no. I have signed. You have seen. It is done. Proctor, the village must have. Damn the village! I confess to God. God has seen my name on this. It is enough. Mr. Proctor, it is not enough. You came to save my soul. Did you not? Here, I have confessed myself. You have not confessed yourself. I have confessed myself. Be there no good penitence, but it be public? God does not want my name nailed upon the church. God sees my name. God knows how black my sins are. It is enough. Mr. Proctor, I must have that. You will not use me. I am no Sarah Good or Tichaba. I am John Proctor. You cannot use me. It is no part of salvation that you should use me. I do not wish to use you. I have three, four children. A man used to, to walk like men in the world. And I sold my friends. You have not sold your friends. Guile me not! I blacken all of them when this is nailed to the church. The very day they hang for silence. Mr. Proctor, I must have. You are the high court. Your word is good enough. Tell them I confess myself. Say, John Proctor broke his knees and wept like a woman. Say what you will. But my name cannot be... It is the same, is it not? If I report it or you sign to it? No, no, it is not the same. Do you mean to deny this confession when you are free? I mean to deny nothing. Then, Mr. Proctor, explain to me why you will not allow me to... Because it is my name! 
Because I cannot have another in my life. Because I lie and sign myself to lies. Because I am not worth the dust on the feet of them that hang. How may I live without my name? I've given you my soul. Leave me my name. Is that document a lie? If it is a lie, I will not accept it. What say you, mister? Marshal. Proctor! Proctor! Man, you cannot! You will hang! I can. There's your first marble. Then I can. You have made your magic now. For now I do think I see some shred of goodness in John Proctor. But you fear nothing. Another judgment waits us all. Hang them high over the town. Weeps for these. Weeps for corruption. God forbid I take it from him. 